The Global Young Academy is the voice of young scientists around the world. We have uh, over 200 members from all over the world and uh, working on different walks of science. Our objective is to give exposure to young scientists and connect them to work on interdisciplinary projects in order to come up with solutions that would address society at large. One of the flagship of the Global Young Academy is a GLOSIS study. This is a, a longitudinal cross-regional uh, project we are in the third phase, we've already did the precursor study, the ASEAN study, and right now we're working on the GLOSIS Africa project. The idea behind this project was that we wanted to look at the factors which impact on early career scientists because these young scientists are the future for the science within Africa and we need to be able to support these young scientists to actually fulfill their goals. These are the ones we need to drive the innovation on the continent and lead us in developing better ways for treating the different problems that we're looking at. And so if we don't have the supportive structures and the ways to help these young scientists do what they want to do, then we're never going to get there. So we're trying to create these and learn about the obstacles for early career scientists and how we can maybe change these. The approach for the GLOSA study, for all GLOSA studies, including the Africa project, is a mixed methods approach. So we combine several different um, types of data to get a more comprehensive picture of how young scientists are doing in Africa. So we use contextual data, so kind of more indicator data, to understand how science works, how the research community works with the kind of funding that's available to young scientists in the region. Um, we also spread a, a survey that we have young scientists answer a whole bunch of questions about mobility, about their own kind of personal background, about gender issues. And then we also conduct interviews. So out of the people that take part in the survey, we select um, people who are interested in being in the interview to get more context and a deeper understanding of these kind of issues. So the challenge is that Africa is a very large continent, so we decided to focus on uh, 14 different countries across different regions, so the north, south, east and west, throughout, throughout the continent. But it means there's a lot of logistical issues in running this study. Getting ethical approval is one of the big logistics. Making sure we have lots of different uh, languages also covered, so we have to have our instrument tools translated into different languages. We're looking at things like um, so gender inequality, things about mobility, so how scientists are forced to move around, and also what they get out from moving around. Infrastructure within the universities, the reagents which exist, the equipment which exists, um, the ability for them to get funding, um, mentorship and how the teaching loads that they do impacts their ability to do research. The vision of the Global Young Academy through this project is basically to improve the living and working situation of young scientists and uh, early career academics. And that's our belief. Once we improve their working and research environment, their productivity is going to be better. Uh, their connection with other young scientists around the world will be str uh, stronger. Back uh, at that moment, they would address uh, those uh, issues not only at the regional but also at the global level for the sake of improving societal living globally speaking. There's been a lot of sensitization to do a lot of collaborative research, interdisciplinary research, like north-south, south-south collaboration, but you have still not been able to have, you know, that high research output coming from Africa. And we want to understand really what are the challenges, how can we address these issues, and how can we fill in that gap among young scientists in Africa. Some of the issues actually that I would want to voice beforehand is issues of mentorship, training gaps, you know, support systems for particularly women scientists, funding, and many other issues that may hinder research output in Africa. The first step that we do once we have all the data is analyze it, compile it, um, and create, create a report that we then spread um, to different stakeholders. But another kind of more long-ranging um, purpose of this data is that we plan to create a database of comparable data across regions. Um, and this is something that doesn't really exist right now. So there are studies of scientists in these different regions, but there, are, there aren't comparable uh, data. So we don't ask scientists the same question across region 
Um, so this is something that's really innovative and new and with a lot of potential. Because, you know, you have this movement, this globalization movement, right? So you, you have this sense that there's this wide global scientific community. But we, we have to understand where these scientists are coming from and the kind of obstacles they face and how that might impact where they stand in this global community of scientists. What we expect uh, from this study is that we will have evidence-based research, we'll have empirical findings that we can use to influence policy, to advise governments, because when you have something tangible, it is easy to convince stakeholders and decision makers. And with that, we can also come up with intervention measures, intervention strategies, because we know what the problem is, and therefore we can come up with approaches and programs that can address those specific problems that the young scientists face in Africa. Because young scientists are the future of the world and Africa has a very large population. So if we can tap on this young positive energy, I believe we can change the continent.